C'est dans quelques minutes. Oui. Comment tu te sens, là? Très anxieuse. Oui. Ça va bien aller. Oui. Bonne chance. Merci. Eve Grolo has been waiting for this moment a long time. C'est mon seul espoir. C'est. Ça fait longtemps que j'ai pas goûté à l'espoir. In the last years, Eve has been a shell of who she was. She's convinced her breast implants are making her sick. J'ai pas le contrôle sur mon physique. J'ai pas le contrôle sur mon mental. Puis j'étais hyper fonctionnelle avant. J'oubliais jamais rien. J... Toutes mes affaires étaient organisées. Maintenant, je suis tout le contraire de ça. Eve says goodbye to her mother as she leaves for the operating room. An American surgeon is ready to take out her implants. C'est ça, c'est mon espoir de retrouver une certaine qualité de vie. They are 30, 40, 50 or 20 years old. A social worker, a makeup artist, businesswoman, a fitness champion. Like hundreds of Canadian women, they say their breast implants made them sick, while their doctors and Health Canada led them to believe they were safe. In 1889, a reckless surgeon injected paraffin wax in his patient's breast. Ever since, women have been used as guinea pigs for all kinds of experiments. During the Second World War, a generous bust becomes a standard of beauty. In the 40s, a mix of fat and silicone is injected directly in women's breast. In the 50s, that's replaced by plastic sponges. Doctors even tried polymer strips with disastrous results. In 1962, Timmy Jean Lindsay, an American mother, is the first woman to receive a silicone implant similar to the one seen today. Shortly after, saline implants are invented. Their shell is also made of silicone, but they are filled with a sterile solution. Fifty years and thousands of surgeries later, the safety of breast implants is still controversial. Aujourd'hui, on va parler de mes implants, ma mère. Catherine Clermont-Bastien is one of Quebec's trendsetters in fitness training and healthy lifestyles. The bikini fitness champion has had breast implants for three years. Three years too many. Je vous énumérer un petit peu de symptômes, les troubles de concentration, la perte de mémoire, et des bourdonnements dans l'oreille, des problèmes des fois gastro-intestinaux. Symptoms that many women with breast implants, like Julie, know all too well. Souvent, je me réveillais le matin avec les mains très enflées, les pieds très enflés. Mon visage était enflé en permanence. L'impression que ma peau était trop tendue pour mon corps. J'avais des ganglions tout le temps inflammés. Perte de cheveux, euh, dépression, anxiété. J'avais des raches sur ma peau. Mes articulations, tout me faisait mal. Infection récurrente. J'avais des rhumes, des grippes. Euh... C'est comme si j'avais un rhume en permanence. Diagnostic d'asthme en 2014, alors que je suis très sportive, j'ai jamais fumé. Beaucoup de problèmes de sinus aussi. J'ai arrêté de transpirer et je n'ai plus transpiré pendant 10 ans. La fatigue. C'était plus que de la fatigue, c'était... En anglais, on dit « exhaustion », c'était... J'étais épuisée complètement. Julie had silicone implants. Eve and Catherine, saline implants. The three women are convinced they had breast implant illness a condition their surgeon never told them about. No, not at all. He advised me to les faire changer au bout de 10 ans. Il y avait aucun problème, il y avait aucun risque. Euh, c'est ça si l'implant rupture, euh, le liquide va être absorbé par ton corps. Les risques de maladies auto-immunes, les risques d'inflammation, de fatigue extrême, c'était pas euh, inscrit nulle part. Breast implant disease is not officially recognized, even though we have been talking about it for 30 years. 
In the 90s, stories like those of Julie, Eve, and Catherine led to a moratorium on silicone implants and to huge class action lawsuits against manufacturers. Ils nous ont euh, vendu des implants mammaires qui n'étaient pas sécuritaires. Alors, on n'est pas là, des rats de laboratoire, des cobayes. Yesterday's symptoms were much the same as those we see today. Je ne peux pas dormir, j'ai mal. On a mal sous les bras, euh, tu as mal dans les bras, tu as mal dans le dos. And faced with this issue, doctors seem as helpless today as they were in the past. C'est une question psychologique que c'était dans ma tête que ça se passait. J'ai été voir un psychologue, effectivement. Mon mal n'a jamais parti. Je me suis ramassée avec un diagnostic de dépression majeure. Puis le fait d'être une femme dans la quarantaine était souvent l'explication pour tout. The alarm sounded on the Internet. C'est quand je suis tombée sur le site de, de Nicole, euh, sur Facebook. Ça a été une révélation. J'ai fait, oh mon Dieu, c'est ça que j'ai. Tous mes symptômes collaient avec les symptômes sur le site de Nicole Daruda. Nicole Daruda is from British Columbia. She too was very ill before having her silicone implants removed. For the past three years, it has become her mission to raise awareness of breast implant illness. Her private Facebook group has more than 50,000 members. There are hundreds of stories and links to studies that suggest breast implants are far from harmless. Ça a été comme une panique de my god, faut que je me fasse enlever. Je veux pas mourir. C'est de, de, de la vraie folie d'appeler partout puis qui, qui peut le faire le plus vite, qui, qui peut le faire le moins cher. The removal of implants put in for aesthetic reasons is generally not covered by health insurance. According to our research, explantation performed in a private clinic can cost between $4,000 and $12,000. Voilà. Wow. Eve chose to have her operation done in Ohio, in the United States. It will cost her $13,000 Canadian dollars. Hi, Eve. Hi. Why Ohio? because that's where you find surgeon Lu Jin Feng, renowned in the United States for removing implants. This, this is where the IT band attaches. The day before surgery, Dr. Feng spends nearly two hours with Eve. Under the muscle. Ça m'apporte vraiment une paix d'esprit. Je me sens hyper rassurée face à la chirurgie. Est-ce que tu as peur des fois qu'ils enlèvent tes implants, qu'on se rend compte que tes implants sont parfaitement sains, puis que dans le fond, tes symptômes n'étaient pas reliés aux implants? Non, aucunement. Aucunement parce que j'ai jamais été malade avant, avant mes implants, donc ça ne peut pas faire autrement que ça s'améliore. Eve Grolo has been on the operating table for an hour when we are allowed into the room. We will soon see for ourselves how delicate is an explant procedure. So this is the very large capsule. Dr. Lu Jin Feng has already removed one implant. It is covered with a capsule, an envelope of scar tissue formed as a reaction to the implant. This is much thicker here. That's right on the chest wall. In some patients, the capsules shrink with time and the breasts become hard and painful. Eve's capsules are still supple, but they are attached to the muscles and the rib cage. Was there a lot of scar tissue on the ribs? Yes. That's why I think she has she has those episodes where the chest hurts. She'll feel a lot better. The surgeon believes the scar tissue prevented Eve from breathing freely. That may have contributed to her fatigue and anxiety. She thinks Eve's chronic cough may also have been caused by the scar tissue. Oftentimes when your breathing is not very smooth, one of your mechanisms is to cough. 
So some people have chronic cough. So what we try to do is clear it as much as possible. Dr. Fang has performed hundreds of removals, and what she has seen has convinced her she had to stop putting them in. When I realize that there is a real illness associated with breast implants, you can't ethically continue to put implants in. Her position disturbs some colleagues. How are you perceived by other surgeons? A pariah. The operation is over. Eve wants the implants sent to Canada for analysis. Chemist Pierre Blais is 80 years old. He has dedicated much of his life denouncing the risks associated with breast implants. In the late 80s, he was a scientific advisor to Health and Welfare Canada, the predecessor of Health Canada. At the time, some implants were covered with a layer of polyurethane that broke up in the body of the carriers. La prothèse n'était pas propre à l'implantation humaine. In 1989, Pierre Blais recommended these implants be taken off the market. Not only did his superiors not listen, but they ordered him to destroy all documents in which he referenced the potential dangers of implants. He refused and was fired for insubordination after 14 years of service. A few years later, those implants Pierre Blais was warning us against were taken off the market. Since then, the chemist has founded a company specializing in the analysis of defective medical devices. Madame Grolo is a person normal in ce qui touche ce genre d'implants là. There are two types of implants. Both have silicone envelopes. Some are filled with silicone gel, while others are filled with saline solution. This is the type of implant Eve had for five years. Sa valve est défectueuse comme à peu près 70% des implants de cette famille-là. The filling valves of Eve's two implants were not watertight. The saline solution could leak out and let the bodily fluids enter. This failure can lead to implant contamination. For 20 years, the chemist has seen it all. Contamination like this, however, is rare. Ev was spared. L'intérieur n'est pas lourdement contaminé. Et ça, c'est une bonne chose, parce qu'autrement, Madame Grolo serait beaucoup plus malade qu'elle l'est. Pierre Blais is now analyzing the capsules. He discovers an anomaly on the right capsule. Madame Grolo avait le commencement d'un abcès pour la, la prothèse droite. Julie also asked Pierre Blais to analyze her implants. She had silicone implants for 11 years. Le dommage à, à l'enveloppe est un dommage de perforation. Pierre Blais found a hole in the envelope of one of the implants. Un fendillement d'à peu près un demi centimètre. According to the chemist, silicone oil had been escaping from Julie's implant for years. Pierre Blais is not a medical doctor, but he's convinced that what he found may have disrupted Eve and Julie's immune system, which could explain some of their symptoms. Yet in 2006, when Health Canada lifted the moratorium on silicone implants, it argued that with the exception of some local complications, the new implants were safe for health. They were nicknamed gummy bears because they had similar consistency. The gel, in principle, could not spread into the women's bodies. Hey, I'm Dr. McCluskey. We're trying to see what it takes to break a breast implant. Every effort was made to convince customers the new implants were indestructible. The demonstrations were absurd. Yeah. The immune system is much, much smarter than that hammer. In the body, the immune system is going to attack the breast implant. And then the breast implant weakens. Dr. Jan Willem Cohen Tervert is a world renowned researcher. The rheumatologist specializes in health problems related to silicone implants. The silicones of that breast implants can leak into the lymph nodes and then can activate 
the immune system. And if you have persistent activation of your immune system, that can lead to allergies. Immune deficiency, meaning that you don't have enough autoantibodies to clear uh, bacteria, for instance, so that you have recurrent infections. Donc on va le couper. When it comes to silicone, not all doctors agree. Quand vous dites euh, la, la toxicité de quelque chose peut dérégler le système immunitaire, entre dire ça et le prouver scientifiquement, il y a un monde. For the president of Quebec's Association of Plastic and Aesthetic Surgeons, breast implant illness doesn't exist. The breast implant illness, ça fait plus de 15 ans, 18 ans que le dossier a été fermé là-dessus. Et, et, et que, ben, que on n'a on a pas associé ça aux implants mammaires. It's true that no causal link has been established scientifically between women's symptoms and their implants. But as the FDA states, to exclude this link from occurring, studies would have to be much larger and longer than what has been done so far. Alors pourquoi on continue de dire qu'ils sont sécuritaires? Parce qu'on n'a aucune preuve qu'ils ne le sont pas. Mais on n'a pas la preuve qu'ils le sont. C'est un peu comme, euh, un peu comme euh, dans le code criminel, on est innocent jusqu'à preuve du contraire. Until those studies are done, Dr. Cohen Turvert has his own observation of what happens after implant removal. We did a large meta-analysis on that, and we showed that about 60 to 70 percent of the patients did feel much better after removal the breast implant. So that's convincing. Au jour 5, mon ganglion a commencé à désenfler. L'asthme s'est disparu. Complètement. Ma concentration est revenue. Mon symptôme majeur à moi, qui était la sensation de brûlement interne, la soif intense, s'est disparu complètement. Et ça n'est jamais revenu. Five months after explantation, Eve is still struggling. Depuis l'opération, ça a été difficile parce que je pensais, moi, me faire opérer puis rebondir sur un saut un pet, puis ça n'a pas été le cas. Breathing is easier, memory problems, anxiety and depressive feelings are almost gone, but some pain and fatigue persist. Il faut que je réapprenne tout tranquillement. J'ai l'impression de sortir d'un coma un peu, là. Breast implant illness is still controversial, but in 2016, the World Health Organization acknowledged that a type of implant can cause cancer of the immune system. A cancer that may help us better understand the mysterious illness of some implant carriers. Today, there's no debates. I have a man-made cancer. Not far from the shores of Lake Nipissing in North Bay, Ontario, we met a woman whose determination is remarkable. In 2009, Terry McGregor was 44 when she decided to go for a breast augmentation. I was very particular about the size. I was very particular about what my out I wanted my outcome to be, which was simply to restore my pre-child uh, breasts. That's, that's what I was looking for. Terry is co-owner of a paving company. She considers herself in perfect health. I didn't lack self-esteem. I did this, though evasive, no different than I would choose to color my gray hair. Terry says her surgeon recommended textured surface silicone implants. They are designed to prevent hardening of the capsules. She says he did talk about certain risks. The risk he told me about was that this was major surgery with respect to being under anesthetic and that any surgery under anesthetic comes with a degree of risk. What about the risk uh, related to the implants? There was no discussion on the risk of the implants. Not at all? None. Everything goes well for six years, apart from some subtle changes. I was looking at pictures of myself, thinking, what's wrong with my face? Why do I look so puffy? Because I hadn't gained any weight. I believe today, I don't know for a fact, I believe today that's when some kind of chronic inflammation had started, some kind of autoimmune, you know, 
my body is reacting to these implants. In 2015, at age 50, Terry goes through a first routine mammogram. About a week later, I hugged my husband and I sort of felt a pinch and a pull and, and I jumped back and um, I had lumps, very marble, hard-like lumps under my left, at, beside my left breast. The mammogram bursts both implants. Terry needs replacement surgery. When they opened me up, I actually had an intracapsular rupture on the right side. I had lymph node involvement on the left side and an extracapsular rupture, which means that the gel appears like jello and it is now inside the breast cavity and it has to be mopped up, flushed out. A few weeks later, the pathology report arrives and Terry's life unravels. There was three tumors that were three by five centimeters each. And so my di diagnosis was to a point where you could visually see the cancer. Terry is the 12th Canadian with implants who received a diagnosis of breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. In the summer of 2015, only 140 cases were identified worldwide. We knew very little about this cancer. I'm on the Canadian Cancer website, um, Canadian Cancer Association saying, no, we've never heard of your cancer. There's no information there. The cancer is at an advanced stage. So unfortunately, my systemic cancer at stage four had moved from the breast implant to the capsule, to the lymph nodes, and then had metastasized to the lymph nodes in my abdomen and was now causing organ damage in the lymph nodes in my stomach. Despite eight chemotherapy treatments, the cancer is still progressing. Terry is told she has only a few months left to live. So by that point, I was reaching out around the world, right? I was reaching out. On Facebook, Terry joins a group of women fighting the same cancer. Through their contacts, she discovers an experimental treatment that will save her life. I had four rounds of the clinical trial, and on my next PET scan, I was NED, no evidence of disease. I, I, feel, I feel great empathy for women who, um, you know, the first women who died from this. Um, you know, that diagnosis was barely invented. Since her recovery, Terry has been committed to helping other women. For two years, she has done a ton of research. I think the most devastating piece of information that I learned after I got sick was that in 2006, Health Canada had put these back on the market with a study of less than a thousand women. Not only did the safety studies presented by the manufacturer's mentor in Allergan involve a small sample of women, but they were not completed. They were supposed to last 10 years. The most advanced was only in its fourth year. Already, the results were troubling. Reoperation rates were high. 24% for patients who had breast augmentation and 41% for those who had undergone breast reconstruction because of cancer, for example. If I'd known that I was a guinea pig and that the long-term safety and efficacy was not done, there is absolutely no way I would have gotten implants. Silicone breast implants have been sold for 40 years, but the companies have only provided two or at most three years of data. In 2005, American epidemiologist Diana Zuckerman fought to prevent silicone implants from returning to the market. If these implants are so safe, why don't the companies prove it by studying women who've had them for a long time? When the FDA and Health Canada gave the green light to manufacturers, Diana Zuckerman lost one of the most important battles of her career. You know, I was devastated, really. I thought that this could not happen. In 2006, Health Canada acknowledged the lack of long-term data. The ministry gave conditional approval to the manufacturers. Allergan and Mentor had to undertake extensive studies. 
they were required to follow 40,000 women each for 10 years. That was huge. And it would have been great if they'd actually done it, but the studies were never finished. Two years after beginning its study, Allergan had lost track of 40% of participants. Mentor did worse. After three years, the manufacturer had lost track of 80% of participants. Instead of cracking down, the FDA and Health Canada allowed manufacturers to continue with smaller studies, an important opportunity that could have finally shed light on breast implant illness had been lost. So one of my challenges to Health Canada is, why are you not holding the manufacturer to these long-term studies? Because you gave us a sense of security and safety that's false. Health Canada refused to give us an interview. In a written statement, the department estimates that manufacturers have fulfilled their condition because they have made efforts and that the participation of women escaped their control. At this time, Health Canada does not intend to require the removal of textured implants from the marketplace. The ministry estimates that just one textured implant carrier in 12,000 will develop lymphoma. To date, 25 Canadian women have developed this cancer. A total of 615 cases have been reported worldwide. 16 women are dead. At a Washington hotel, 20 women are preparing to meet with FDA officials. And I represent the uh, Carolina group for BII. I was a paramedic for 11 years in Texas. I'm the third generation of my family to be harmed by my breast implants. I was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 33, and I was diagnosed with a man-made cancer called anaplastic large cell lymphoma at the age of 40. I lost my chest. I have not lost my voice. Terry McGregor has made the trip from North Bay in Ontario. Nicole Deruda has arrived from Vancouver. She will speak on behalf of the 50,000 members of her Breast Implant Illness Facebook group. It's the first time they meet. Hi, Terry. Terry. Women have found an ally. This computer analyst has discovered that crucial information about breast implants was hidden to the public for years. So my name is Madrice Tomes. I used to work at the FDA um, and was an IT person. Madrice Tomes developed a software that allows extensive research into the FDA's public database. It contains all adverse event reports related to medical implants. An adverse event is a problem that puts the health of a patient at risk. In 2016, a lawyer asked Toms to help him. And he knew of a certain number of cases with a specific type of breast implant and wanted me to pull up the reports for him. And the reports weren't there. She believes manufacturers have reported major incidents, such as ruptures or reoperations, in reports meant for minor incidents. Those reports are not public. That attorney uh, talked to the manufacturer, talked to the FDA, and then suddenly, within about three months, we were seeing hundreds and hundreds of reports every single month. The FDA required that major adverse events be properly reported, and overnight, statistics blew up. Since 2008, the FDA had published an average of 230 reports a year related to breast implant problems, compared to nearly 13,000 in 2017 and the first half of 2018. According to our information, some of those reports could be linked to a fraud perpetrated by two doctors. Even by taking those numbers into account, the fact remains that the number of reports received by the FDA has increased from 20 to 400 per month. And so it did appear for maybe 10, 12 years that the devices had gotten safer over time. But really, it was just they weren't visible. In Canada, the data tells a similar story. Hardly any movement for years then, in 2017 and 18, 
nearly 600 reports suddenly appear. Health Canada explained the increase was due to a change in mentors' adverse event reporting practices. Despite the rise in reporting, these numbers are just the tip of the iceberg. For all medical devices, manufacturers are required to report major adverse events, but not physicians. The result? Many of the problems are not reported. With the FDA, there was an audit done by the Office of the Inspector General in 2010, and they found that only 14% of adverse events are being reported. We showed Mattress Tom's the Canadian statistics. It looks like Canada is reporting less. Health Canada explains that underreporting of adverse events is a known and chronic problem. In order to improve the situation, the ministry intends to make reporting mandatory for hospitals. The new rules could be in place as early as 2019. It will not change much when it comes to breast implants. The majority of procedures are done in private practice and not in hospitals. Surgeons will be able to continue to not report serious incidents and symptoms linked to breast implant illness. That's, that's the crux of the issue, in my opinion. They refuse to acknowledge the symptoms. They don't record them in your file. Even when women explant, they say things like, oh, she was just unhappy with her breast implants. They write that. How do you know that? I know that by talking, hearing the story of 50,000 women. 50,000 women on a Facebook group doesn't impress Dr. Eric Ben-Simon. Pourquoi on en parle plus? Pourquoi vous trouvez des pages Facebook? Peut-être à cause des médias sociaux, peut-être à cause euh, d'un effet de somatisation de masse, qui est un effet qui est connu. C'est dans leur tête? C'est ce que euh... vous êtes en train de nous dire? <rire> Je ne veux pas dire que c'est dans leur tête, parce que quand c'est dans notre tête, on ne ressent pas vraiment le symptôme, on, on l'imagine. Mais quand on somatise, on peut ressentir un symptôme sans, sans avoir la, de, la, de la pathologie ou le problème. Bonjour. Dr. Ben Simon is not the only surgeon to think that breast implant disease occurs first between the ears. With a hidden camera, our colleagues went shopping for implants with Ev and Catherine's surgeons. Alors, c'est ta première visite avec nous? Oui, J'avais lu sur Internet qu'il y a comme des femmes qui se plaignent d'une genre de maladie des implants. Pour moi, c'est comme une espèce de, de folie collective. À date, il n'y a pas de science qui match la maladie. Écoute, euh, j'ai euh, la peau sèche, je suis étourdi, ma vision a baissé, euh, j'ai développé une allergie aux tomates. C'est n'importe quoi, OK? N'importe quoi. Puis vous expliquez ça comment? Euh... Je comprends pas. Je pense que c'est peut-être quelque chose comme une angoisse aux tous les prothèses. C'est des angoissés. When we confronted Dr. Chagnon with what he said, he insisted on giving more information. On parle dans certains articles de la théorie de la nociception. Ce que c'est, c'est que l'implant est un stimulus négatif qui vient alimenter la crainte que tes implants peuvent te donner une maladie. C'est lui là, qui te dit, regarde-moi, je suis le méchant dans toi. OK? Fait que toi, tu développes une crainte. Une crainte qui va croître de façon exponentielle et à un moment donné, tu vas développer des symptômes. If nociception is a risk, should it be mentioned before implantation? Je pense qu'on va, va devoir modifier notre pratique, oui, effectivement, et ajouter euh, cet élément-là dans nos consultations. Cet élément de risque? Oui. As for Dr. Tracy Thompson, she told us she began including the risk of autoimmune diseases in her consultations. She sympathizes with women who experience symptoms. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait avec les femmes qui ont des symptômes, mais chez qui on n'arrive pas à diagnostiquer une véritable maladie? On les ignore? Je pense pas qu'il faut les ignorer. Je pense qu'il faut les prendre en charge. Je pense qu'il faut les éduquer. Je pense qu'on les éduquer. Peut, on, on, les, édu les éduquer dans le, pas dans le sens péjoratif, bien sûr, mais de, 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 leur, de, de leur apprendre euh, la, la physiologie, un peu de les renseigner sur la physiologie. Je ne disais pas ça dans le sens péjoratif du terme. In less than an hour, these women will be at FDA's headquarters.
They will request public hearings on breast implants and the removal of textured implants from the market, those that are associated with known lymphoma cases. Have you ever had a chance to meet with Health Canada yet? No, we've been unsuccessful in getting a face-to-face -face meeting. Despite, um, that is always how I end every conversation. Can we come to Ottawa? There is something intrinsically wrong that you have these two Canadians who are such loud global advocates, and yet Health Canada has done a great job of putting us off. We just want a meeting. Don't be afraid. Like, I'm not sure what they're afraid of. The meeting with FDA officials is over. Each of the 20 women had a few minutes to present her story and what she hopes the agency will do next. There were 20 members of the FDA, so I thought that was fantastic that they sort of brought a staff to match the, the balance of the women who attended. We've done hundreds of hours of work to prepare for the FDA. I'm gonna do a quick cut and edit, exit FDA, insert Health Canada. Health Canada is simply a mimic of the FDA's conditional approval. So there's nothing that was said here today that couldn't simply be translated to Health Canada. For the past two years, Terry has been lobbying Health Canada to send a warning to all women who have textured implants that can cause lymphoma. I drive a Chevy, and when my truck has got some kind of warning or alert, I get a letter from General Motors that says, please take your vehicle to the dealership. You may have a problem. So why is General Motors telling me about a problem in my truck? But I have a product in my body that the manufacturer is not letting me know. Women with textured implants in their body in Canada deserve a letter, not to alarm them, but to alert them that they need to start looking for symptoms. They need to, to pay attention to subtle changes. Manufacturers Allergan and Mentor refused to grant us an interview. In written statements, they both stated the safety of their products is supported by numerous studies done before and after their approval. The women in our story that had breast implants had this to say to Health Canada. Si moi j'avais un souhait, c'est que ce que Santé Canada a pas fait en 2006 qu'ils soient obligés de le faire maintenant. Et j'exigerais immédiatement une étude de 10 à 15 ans sur plusieurs dizaines de milliers de femmes. Et là, on verrait au niveau systémique qu'est-ce qui se passe avec ces implants-là. Vous ne connaissez pas quelqu'un plus en santé qui fait le plus attention à sa santé que moi. J'ai été malade. Fait que ça prouve juste que n'importe qui peut être malade. Personne n'est à l'abri. Tellement pensé souvent, qu'est-ce que je, je dirais Santé Canada? Si je les avais en face de moi, puis. Euh... Je suis en, encore dans l'étape de colère. <rire> fait que je les enverrais probablement promener. Je comprends pas comment ces gens-là peuvent permettre des choses comme ça. On n'est pas 50 000 folles. Dr. Cohen Turvert has just published the results of a study following 25,000 women. The study concludes that implant carriers have an increased risk of developing autoimmune diseases. He believes that genetic and environmental factors predispose some women to such problems. At a certain time, you have to decide that action should be taken. And one of the actions, of course, is that we develop an excellent risk test to um, define who is going to be ill. But uh, until that test is not yet there, we should conclude that breast implants are not safe. These women aren't demanding that all breast implants be removed from the market. They want the potential risks associated with implants adequately studied and disclosed. But I'm looking for that woman that is getting surgery tomorrow to know more than I did. Health Canada assures us it intends to meet with patients soon to discuss the lymphoma issue. So Terry may get the invitation she's been waiting for after all. Was it worth the trip? 
at some point you have to have some faith, right? That you, you invest the time, you invest the money, and hope for the best. So we're hopeful.